Okay, in this lesson we are going to talk about the relationships between a function, its first derivative, and its second derivative. Some questions may not require you to graph a function or functions to talk about these relationships. However, there are some problems on the AP exam where you must be able to answer using information from the graph only. So we're going to approach these relationships on this lesson from a graphical point of view. And this is going to get us some points on the AP test. So here we have the graph of a function f of x. And we want to try to graph the, der the derivative function. We want, only from graphical information, we want to try to discern what the graph of f prime of x might look like. Well, there are some clues from the graph of f. First of all, the two biggest clues that I see are right here. Because I know right there, f prime equals 0. That means if I was going to graph points on the graph of the function f prime of x, it would have a 0 at that x value. The same would happen here. Here's another spot where the output on the derivative function has to be 0. The other things that I can discern from the graph of the original function is that over this entire interval from negative infinity up to 0, all of the outputs on my derivative function have to be positive. Why is that so? Because f is increasing. And over the interval where f is increasing, f prime is positive. So I know all of those outputs have to be positive. The interval from 0 up to 2, all of the outputs on my derivative function are negative because f is decreasing. I also know that from 2 to positive infinity, all of the outputs on my derivative function are positive because f is increasing. So I take all of that information, and I'm going to try to clear this off where we can see what's going on here. We knew we had a 0 there. We knew we had a 0 there. And all we know is that from negative infinity up to 0, the outputs on our derivative function are positive. We know that those outputs lie above the x-axis. That's what it means for a function to have positive outputs. All right, from 0 to 2, all of my derivative outputs are negative. So I know that all of my output values here are negative. That's f prime being negative. Now, the one thing that I can discern here, I'm going to kind of pick up a hint from my second derivative function to see what's going on at 1. At my second derivative, at x equal 1 has to be 0. Why does it have to be 0? Because f goes from concave down to concave up. That means that my first derivative has a horizontal tangent line there. It has to. What the first derivative tells me about f, the second derivative tells me about f prime. So not only are my outputs negative, I know that f prime has a horizontal tangent line right there. And lastly, from 2 to positive infinity, all of my outputs on my first derivative function are positive again. How do I know that? Because over that entire interval, f is increasing. Where f is increasing, f prime is positive. Now here's the one thing. We'll call that the, dra uh, the graph of f prime of x. Here's the one thing I don't know. I don't know if f looks like this. I don't know if f looks like this. I don't know exactly what f, sorry, f prime. I keep saying f, I mean f prime. I don't know vertically exactly how it behaves. Vertical behavior is not known exactly. And the people that are grading my work are OK with that. They're fine with that, OK? 
So we don't have to be really concerned vertically with the behavior of these functions as we're drawing them. What we do need to be concerned about is what's going on horizontally. Because we do know that exactly right there, f prime has a zero, and exactly right there, f prime has another zero. And, and at this value, no matter what vertically we make uh, f prime look like, we need to be able to show that we realize f double prime is zero there and that f prime will have a minimum. So don't get too worked up or worried about what your derivative functions look like vertically. We do, we're, we're not uh, anchored in the plane vertically. We just know what's going on for sure horizontally. And we do know where we increase and where we decrease and where we change direction and so forth. So I'm going to make a drawing of what I think f prime looks like. And again, horizontally, I know f prime looks like that. And then we're going to pick another color and we're going to do the same things and we're going to try to draw f double prime from this information. Well, everything that f everything that I got about f prime from f, I can get about f double prime from f prime where f prime slopes are negative, meaning the outputs of the second derivative function will be negative. Where the first derivative has a horizontal tangent line, the second derivative is going to have a zero. Where the first derivative has positive slopes, the second derivative is going to have positive outputs. So that takes practice. I don't expect you to be able to go directly there very quickly. I know it's going to take practice, but you'll get an idea of what your derivative function should look like. What might be running through your head right now is how on earth did you know that f double prime was a line? Why didn't you draw some squiggle in it or something? Well, here's how I knew. f of x is a cubic function. It's something cubed. That's the lead term anyway. I don't know what the rest of it looks like. But it's a cubic function, which tells me f prime is going to be a squared function. And lo and behold, look at the graph. Yep, it's a parabola that opens up. And if that's true, then the derivative of something that is squared means that the second derivative is something to the power of 1. Well, anything to the power of 1, graphically, that's a line. So I knew it was going to be linear. So I'm not only using the attributes of the derivative functions. I'm using everything I know about derivatives, derivative rules, and all these interrelationships that are going on here. So if you're asked to draw the graph of the derivative function, given the original function, you want to look for all this information. And what's going on on the second derivative can also tell you what's happening on the first derivative, because it is the slope of the tangent line there. So here are our functions. Here is f of x. Here is f prime of x. And look, it does come way down here. It's not exactly how I had it drawn, but I did have positive outputs from negative infinity to 0. I had a 0 at 0. I had a minimum at 1. I had a 0 at 2. And I had negative outputs from 0 to 2 and positive outputs from 2 to positive infinity. So all of those landmarks were correct. And the second derivative function, which I don't have on there yet. Let me get that on there. The second derivative function is this line. And again, if I look at the first derivative, all those slopes are negative, meaning all the outputs on the second derivative are negative. From here in this direction, all of the slopes are positive, meaning the output on the second derivative is positive. And here, the first derivative has a horizontal tangent line, meaning the second derivative has a 0. So I got all that information, all those landmarks, correct. So let's do another practice problem here. Sketch a possible graph of f prime of x. So given f of x, let's sketch a possible graph of f prime. 
Well, f prime is going to have some zeros. It's got a zero at negative 6. It's got a zero at, I guess that's 2. And it's got a zero at 9. So I know f prime has a zero, a zero, and a zero. Okay? I know that the outputs on the derivative function from negative infinity to negative 6 are negative. The outputs from negative 6 to positive 2 are positive. The outputs from 2 to 9 are negative. And the outputs from 9 to positive infinity are positive. Okay? I know that we have roughly right around in here somewhere an inflection point. So that tells me, and we go specifically from concave up to concave down. This information tells me f prime, if I go from positive to negative, has a max at this x value, or very near that x value. I've got the same thing going on, you know, roughly right around in here somewhere, except f double prime is going from negative to positive. So f prime will have a min. So I'm going to use all that information and graph a rough result for f prime. So I have a 0, I have a 0, and I have a 0. I know that I have a max, let's see, outputs are negative. I have a max roughly, um, we'll say around here somewhere. So I go up here to a max. I know that I stay positive until I get to that 0. I have a min roughly around here somewhere. All of these outputs are negative. So I'm going here. Oops, sorry, that should go back up to 9. And then all of my outputs beyond that are positive. So vertically, I don't know exactly what f prime looks like. But horizontally, I've hit all the landmarks. I've hit my max, I've hit my min, I've hit my zeros, and I've tried to draw it as a smooth and continuous function. OK, let's see if we can talk about this one really quickly. Here is a function, y equals f of x. OK, and this, this graph is y equals f of x. It is just a lot of linear pieces. And we want to graph y equals f prime of x. And that's what the blue pieces are there. This, from 0 to 1, the slope of this line, which obviously is 2, are the outputs on f prime. f prime does not exist here. I can't draw a tangent line there. There's no output on the derivative function because the original function is not smooth and continuous there. It has a break. There's another line from x equal 1 to x equal 4, and its slope, which apparently is, I don't know, roughly maybe 1 quarter or 1 third, the slope of that line are the outputs, right, on the derivative function. Here, from x equal 4 to x equal 6, the slope of the tangent line is 0. So the outputs on the derivative function are 0. Again, here and here, I couldn't draw a tangent line. So there, are, there is no output on the derivative function. And the slope of this line, which is negative, so those outputs should be below the x-axis, that slope being negative and looks roughly like negative 1. So there is, again, taking information from the function and drawing the graph of the derivative function from that. Now, I have one more example here. Uh, sketch a possible graph of f given the graph of f prime. So this reverses what we've been doing. Here we're looking at the derivative function, and they want us to get information from it to graph the original function. I'm out of time on this video, so we'll pick this up in the next video.